It's not entirely clear where all of this began, or can we really see a clear end in sight, but a Twitter feud between Carlos Maza and Steven Crowder erupted this week. Now, for celebrity feuds, I generally just grab my popcorn, sit back, and watch, and I don't really take sides in it, but this particular feud really does threaten to affect all of us on alternative media. Before I get too far into the topic here, I do want to leave a disclaimer. This is not going to be a video that I can really be objective about. Crowder is one of the main influences that got me started into all media in the first place, and while I regularly utilize Vox for source material, I rarely ever consume their videos, so I had really no idea who Carlos Monza was before Crowder started talking to him. In addition, Crowder's biases do align with my own, so it's really hard for me to not go and take his side on things, but I'll be as objective as I can. Now, this story seems a lot longer than it actually is. There really aren't a lot of moving parts to the story just yet. But we've been talking about it for over a week, so it seems like it's been going on longer. But late last week, Carlos Maza launched into a campaign to try and get Steven Crowder deplatformed completely. The citations that Maza brought up were that Crowder was harassing Maza in several of his videos. There aren't a lot of terms in the terms of service for YouTube that talk about creator-on-creator -creator harassment, especially considering the fact that most creators are never going to be in the same room at the same time. And YouTube launched an investigation, and they did find initially that Crowder had broken absolutely no rules and there were no issues out there. And this is where the campaign comes in, because after YouTube made their decision, Maza launched into his campaign to try and rally people behind him and try and get the decision changed. And after lots of protests from Maza himself, from Vox, and from the people who support Vox and Maza, YouTube did look into this again. And after looking into it again, they decided that they were going to demonetize Crowder, and one of the big decisions that they made to this was that he was not allowed to monetize until his channel took down much of its hate speech. One of the main citations that was going through that was the famed t-shirt that states that socialism is for figs. Yes, I said figs because that's not what the shirt says. I don't care how much Maza tries to say that it is. Furthermore, YouTube went on to announce the fact that their terms of service are now going to be changing. There's no clear word as to how they're going to change yet, but you can better bet that I'm going to be reading through them as soon as the new terms of service drop, and I'm interested to see what's going to change and how it's going to affect all of us. Now, I've been a fan of Crowder's for a very long time, and I've been watching his videos for almost as long as I've understood that YouTube is a great place to get content that isn't controlled by ABC, NBC, Fox, or CBS. So, I can honestly look at this and say that I really saw this coming. I've enjoyed the segments in which Crowder debunks Carlos Maza or where he debunks some other article that comes off of Vox, but I listened to the language and I thought to myself every time I sat and listened to the language, yes, I find this hilarious, yes, this is edgy, but this is going to come back and start to cause a problem. Because this was definitely going to get a reaction from the Vox host. While I was reading to do this video, and while I was listening to news pundits talking about this before I decided to do this video, I kept seeing a David and Goliath comparison with Vox being Goliath and Crowder being David, and I don't necessarily consider that to be accurate either. I'm not going to be able to call Crowder an underdog on this one. Sorry, Steven. It is true that Vox is an independent media firm. In fact, they own several other media outlets other than their flagship outlet, Vox.com. But NBC has a considerable financial tie into Vox Media Group. I'm not saying that NBC owns Vox because that would be inaccurate. A lot of the pundits out there this past week did try to say that NBC does own Vox, but it's just a $2 million interest in the company.
Crowder as well appears to be independent. In fact, one of the things that Mazza brought up while he was trying to get Crowder deplatformed was that demonetization on YouTube wasn't going to do anything because the majority of Crowder's income comes from his mug club, a yearly subscription service in which people can buy a mug for $69 or $99 a year and support the show financially in a way that YouTube just won't. But... Crowder is far from independent as well. Last year, Blaze TV bought out CRTV, who had been hosting Crowder's daily show outside of YouTube. Only one of his videos ever made it to YouTube every week, and everything else was behind a paywall on CRTV. And that means that Steven Crowder does have an affiliation with Glenn Beck, a more mainstream personality on the conservative side. Additionally, Stephen is formerly a member of Fox News, a fact that he is not exactly kept secret. He talks about it quite often on his show, in fact. And lastly, we just look at the numbers here, because Crowder is sitting on the edge of 4 million subscribers on YouTube. And that's not counting everybody else who has bought his mugs and watches his program over on Blaze TV, and all of the other people that consume his content that aren't subscribed to his channel. With... A number of subs like that and a number of views that go to each one of his videos every single week. Crowder's on the edge of mainstream. He may not quite be a mainstream personality yet, but he is floating right on the edge. A lot of people say the same thing about Shapiro, and I say the same thing as well. In fact, I've called Shapiro mainstream at this point, so... It's not exactly as if we're not sitting on a level playing field here. With 4 million subscribers, there are a lot of people that are sitting around waiting to see what happens to Crowder. But more importantly than that, I want to look at what happens to the rest of us and what this means for the YouTube community at large. The smaller creators, the medium creators, and even some of the larger creators out there that are going to be affected by the fact that YouTube feels the need to change their terms of service. I look at the alternative media sometimes, and I've compared it to a Hydra. There is an army of people out there that want to try and take some of the bigger figures in the alternative media movement down, but just like Hydra, if you cut off one of the heads, two more are going to jump up and grow in their places. And I see a lot of that too. I mean, I see YouTubers getting deplatformed, and I see smaller channels that start to boom because these larger channels got deplatformed. People are going to find a place to consume that information no matter how many people you kick off the site. Unfortunately though, this never does stop at one, and if they can do this to Crowder, they can do this to almost anybody in the YouTube community. In fact, it would probably be easier to take down some of the rest of us. Crowder has a lawyer and he's not afraid to fight back, and some of the smaller creators out there don't have the same kind of funding and the same ability to hire a lawyer of Bill Richmond's caliber in order to fight their battles for them. Lastly, this does not stop at YouTube. Now, the majority of public discourse at this point takes place over on YouTube. This is true. And that's because there are voices from both sides of the aisle that utilize YouTube as a communications platform. But... Once you start to kick off some of the edgier people from YouTube and they are forced to go and find an alternative like BitChute, a lot of their followers are going to follow them over to BitChute and they're going to take a lot of the independence and a lot of the middle of the road people with them. That's also going to attract a lot of the more left-leaning people over to the new platform and once the left-leaning people go over to the new platform, they look at it and they try to change it into something else. So. They would absolutely try and sandbag BitChute just the way they've sandbagged YouTube over the last two years. Before I close this video, I do want to share an experience that I've had over the past week, and I think may be related to the fact that this is happening to Crowder and some of the other conservative voices over on YouTube. And that is the fact that I've been having some funny things happen with my videos over on YouTube. Most of the people who are seeing this video are used to seeing my regular Friday-Sunday schedule and my podcast that comes out on Tuesdays. So, you've noticed the fact that those videos were always there. My Friday ones were sometimes a little bit late and that had to do with my work schedule for my 40-hour-a-week job, but 
They were always there, but my last three videos have uploaded in private mode, and I'm not sure why, but I have an idea. This is a small channel. I only have 109 subscribers right now, and while I appreciate every one of you, that does mean the fact that I'm not eligible for monetization just yet. Therefore, when I start to have a little bit of wrong thing, YouTube has to find another way to punish me other than trying to take my funding away, and I think a part of that came with the fact that my videos are uploading straight into private mode. I didn't think much of it. I thought it was a glitch and they didn't give me the link, so I went over to the video screen to change the mode back into public and it appeared to be public, but going over to the analytics page, the videos had not shown up yet as if they were uploaded in unlisted or private mode. So I did have to manually change them to private and then back to public to get them to show up. So there's a way around what's happening, but it is a little bit eerie the fact that this is happening to me just as this Mazda thing is going forward. For the most part YouTube has been a wonderful platform and it gives opposing ideas a place where they can meet and be debated and I really hope that even with these new terms of service that this continues to be the case because if we push everybody that's on one side of the aisle onto one platform and let everyone who's on the other side of the aisle stay on the original platform we get pushed further into our own corners, and in this country, we do need to start trying to unite rather than being further divided. What do you think about new YouTube terms of service, and whose side did you come out on in this argument, Crowders or Mazas? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comment section below, and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter, with a one in place of the eye. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. You're